Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to dive back into 3M's Visual Attention Software, or VAS for short, and I want to use the Adobe XD plugin on a design that I'm currently working on, and I want to show you guys how I use VAS's analysis and custom reports to make more informed design changes and refinements to ultimately achieve my design goals. So I've partnered back up with VAS and the team to bring you today's video, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. And just in case you guys missed my last video, it was an introduction to VAS where I go in detail about what VAS is and how it works. So you want to make sure you check out that video as well. I'll put a card on the screen now if you guys want to go check that out. So the website I'm currently working on is an agency website. So we've got a nice bold heading and a nice white theme going on here. So very minimal. And I have the hero section laid out and I just want to run an analysis on this. So I'm just going to click on my artboard. And here in 3M's Visual Attention Software plugin for XD, I'm going to select the web page from the content type, and I'm just going to run a base analysis. I'm not going to select any areas of interest. I just want to get a general analysis just to see how it's looking. Okay, so the first thing that I want to pay attention to here is the heat map and what is targeting users' eyes. So first off is the big bold heading. That's what I'm going for. In this particular design, I'm looking for the heading to get targeted, that call to action, and our first case study that we're gonna be highlighting down here at the bottom. We also are hitting on the company logo, which is nice too. That's a kind of a tertiary goal of mine to hit. So those kind of hot spots are what I'm looking for. So right away, we're not hitting the call to action, which is to be expected. We don't have a whole lot of contrast there. So we might need to make some changes there. Also, right here in this image, we're getting a really hot spot. Um, I'm not too worried about that because as the user scrolls, I'm thinking of having the text slide in here on the left. So that actually might work out in my favor. So that's the heat map. Let's take a look at our hot spots. 90% chance right here on this big bold heading. That is perfect for what I'm looking for. We want people to know that we're building brands. Awesome. And let's check out the gaze sequence. If we're going down to that image. I would rather have the one on the heading here. And over here, we're going back to the heading. So we're kind of doing a double take from the image to this. So we might need to work on that a little bit as well. So let's just go ahead and turn off our results. And I want to run a areas of interest on this. So I'm just going to click on that arrow to expand this. And I've grabbed the rectangle tool here, or that's R on the keyboard. And I want to target the full logo, the H1 heading, the call to action, and I'm gonna do a full block on this bottom part of our case study. So I'm just holding shift and clicking on each one of these, and I'm gonna convert all those rectangles to targets, and you can see they have this green dash border going around them. It lets me know that is a target area, and then we're going to select the artboard once again and reanalyze this. Okay, again, this is kind of showing me that that image is drawing more attention than my heading and my call to action and logo. Uh, so that's not what I'm looking for. I might want to push this further down. Uh, so we need to make some design changes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toggle off those results and I'm going to double click on my artboard name and I'm just going to call this version one. And I'm going to hit command D with that artboard selected to create a duplicate. And then we're going to call this one version two. So I like to work with multiple artboards. So I'm kind of working non-destructively. So if I were to delete or change something, we always have a backup of that version over here. So the first thing I want to work on is my contrast. Right now we're using a black and white theme, uh, but I'm not stuck with that. I can add some color if I want. So first, let's just change up this button here in the center of the screen. So I'm just going to go inside of that group and I'm going to change this to a black button with some white text. And so right away, I think that with some edges and a little bit of black on white contrast there might draw your eye a little bit better. And then I'm going to see how this design looks with this image pushed down. So first we're 120 from the bottom of that. Let's push it down a little bit. Maybe down to 200 or even further. Just because I want this to kind of have your eyes attention, but not so much. And since we've created that extra white space, we can kind of center this a little bit more. And then I'm just going to run a quick analysis just to see what those changes did. All right, so we're getting a little bit better results. We've got our call to action button up to 58%, which I believe is higher. So let's double check here and hit show. And since I duplicated this artboard, 
we can check our target regions on both. And we've bumped up to 58% on our call to action. So that's definitely better, but I would like to get it uh, in more of the red territory, the, the high 80s and 90s. Our logo has went up a little bit. I assume that's because we dropped the center content down. And our image has definitely went down just because you can't see a lot of it. So your eyes are naturally not gonna be drawn so harshly. Uh, so we're making some good improvements here. So I'm just gonna leave these results on over here. But on this one, I'm going to toggle it off for now. And let's maybe make the padding on this button a little bit larger. So I'm gonna change that from 14 on the height of the top and bottom to 20 and then 60 on the sides which is gonna make that button quite a bit bigger there. And again, we're not doing any color contrast at the moment. So I just wanna rerun that analysis and see what that did. All right, so we're still looking about the same. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna play around with color. Cause like I said, I'm not sold on having uh, a black and white only theme. So I'm just going to check my visual elements real quick and get a more detailed look. So the only contrast we have on red and green, blue and yellow is on our image. Obviously we have no faces in this, so I'm gonna ignore this uh, readout. Our intensity, we're picking up in all of our areas. Maybe not so much in our logo there. Let's go ahead and add a color to our button. So since we're using black and white throughout, uh, a nice lighter color, like a yellow, is very bright. Um, so let's try something like that first. And we'll change that text to black. So that's gonna bump up our contrast. So let's reanalyze that. So adding that, we've only went up 5%. Uh, so let's go into our visual elements. And we don't have a lot of contrast in the red and green. So we want to change that a little bit. So I'm gonna try rounding the button out. And let's try a nice mint green. And then let's also copy that rectangle, paste it on top, and I'm gonna send it to the back. And I'm just gonna push it down about 10 points. And then I'm going to object blur on this. And I'm gonna lower it down to five on the blur. And then let's lower the opacity and just get a little bit of a glowy drop shadow on our button there. And on that, we've got our call to action into the red territory. We're at 82%. I'm gonna check out my visual elements. And we've got a stronger contrast in both the blue and the yellow and the red and green, which is looking good. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's check out our gaze sequence now and see if anything has changed. We're hitting one on the heading, two on the call to action. And we're pretty much only hitting that heading, which is what I want. I want most of the attention here. Uh, so that doesn't bother me that the four or the three doesn't drop to the image just because it is a secondary element to me. Um, I would like a little bit more attention on our logo, so we'll play with that in a moment. Let's check out our hotspots. We're still getting some attention in the hotspots, but mainly the center section, which is looking a lot better, 98% for this whole section. Heat map is looking really good. And again, let's add some detail to this logo. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that green color that we're using on our button for that contrast. I'm gonna copy that color code, and I'm gonna go up here and just add a rectangle underline under our logo. And with that underline, we should get a little bit more. So let's actually check what we had on our last result. So we're 31 on our targeted area there, mainly blue and maybe just a slight bit of light blue there on our heat map. So let's see if we can get that better on this run. So let's reanalyze. We only went up 1%. Let's check our other areas. So we're still not getting enough contrast as I want there. So let's play around with our design a little bit more. So instead of trying the green, let's see what black looks like underneath this. So let's try our analysis now. And that got us up to 40, which I think is pretty good for the logo. It's not too distracting from the rest of the content, but it looks nice. So just changing that, we're probably going up on the edge value here. Let's see where edges are. So A would be 37, and our other values are not looking too bad there. Let's compare that to our last result. 
31. So yeah, we definitely went up on our edges. So that looks pretty good. So I think I'm happy with these results. We're looking good on pretty much every area. Our heat map even went up. We're just in a slight yellow there on the logo, which is nice. Still got good hot spots, and our gaze sequence is right where I want it here in the center of the screen. So we take a look at our first design here on top of our new design. Not a whole lot changed. We've changed a little bit of our contrast on our button, a little bit of our positioning. We add a little bit more white space up top and down bottom here. Push this image down a little bit lower. We made the logo have a darker black underline. So just very subtle design changes. But overall, you can clearly see that the results have been altered. Our image has dropped from 93% to 31. Our logo went up to 40. Our heading even went up from 90 to 98. And our call to action went from a terrible 18 to an 83%. So those first three to five seconds are crucial as designers. And you can see with minor tweaks to a design like this, we've drastically changed where the user's eye is gonna be following on the screen. Once again, there's our heat map, definitely improved there as well. Our hot spots have improved. And finally, our gaze sequence is more of a targeted area than it was before. So that's how I use 3M's visual attention software to guide the user's eye in those first crucial three to five seconds, just minor tweaks and changes to really get that visual hierarchy that I'm looking for. I hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Again, I have a promo code for you guys. If you wanna check out Vast, there's a link down in the description. Make sure you use promo code Kaler for five extra trial credits. That'll get you up to 15 free trial credits. Subscribe for more design-related content. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.